Hello guys, Matt's Play here. So, you guys seen all the trailers, you get all hyped, and you want to play Opera Omnia. We need some help along the way, help to get you going. So this is what this video is here for. This is the Opera Omnia Starter Guide! Alright guys, I've been playing this game for like a year now, so I've got a lot of experience. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I'm hoping that I can share some knowledge with you and help you along the way. So, without further ado, let us start, let this guide begin. Let's talk stories and events. Story mode will be here from the get go, and you can complete to up to chapters one to five. Uh, that's how it was for JP. I don't know how it's going to be for global, but we can do the first five chapters. Now, what is great about that is that story mode gives us a lot of gems, so you can use that to get lots of gems. And when you complete a chapter, you get the option to do hard mode, which is do again. And when you complete a calm hard mode, there's a contract that gives you 1,000 gems. Now, one of the best things you can do is you can take your time with hard mode. Uh, when you do a hard mode, you can do it later. There's no rush or need to do it straight away. So there's a little bank of gems which you can go back to whenever you need. As you can see on my map here, there's some chapters I haven't done in hard mode yet. So I'm waiting for a time when I really, really need gems. So until then, use story mode as a kind of bank. A bank to rely on some extra gems you need by. Uh, there are some characters that are really good in story mode. Uh, the second event, which is the set of no, oh wait, no, is it the third? I think yes, yeah, the third. Sorry, the third event, which is the set event, requires you to have Laguna, and Laguna is like a chapter five character. So you want to get that completely out of the way, so you can get synergy and get synergy character straight away, and then you get so prepared for it. Events. One thing about events is that events. You only get like three character events per month, and the events can last like a week and a half, more or less. No pressure to do them ASAP, so take your time with doing events. And if you miss them, don't worry because eventually the events sort of come back. So there's an option called Story Fragments, which is pretty much the expanded version of the events. And while they are pretty much reoccurrences, they're treated as a story chapter as opposed to being like an actual event. So there's an opportunity to earn even more gems. And there's a hard mode for it as well. That gets you more gems as well. So that's really good too. And you can do it whenever you want. So as you can see guys here, there's like a little temple that I'm kind of like kind of trying to point towards. That's where they will come and... They are there for the rest of the game. There's no pressure. There's no time limit on them. You can do them whenever you want. Although, to unlock later chapters in the game, you kind of need to have the event characters unlocked already. So, there is kind of that kind of pressure, but you can unlock the, the event characters fairly quick in these and leave the rest to do later on. So, story mode and story fragments are two really good ways to earn lots of gems, and they kind of are like a backup in case you might need some more gems. Events do give out quite a lot of gems as well, and get tickets as well. The tickets are pretty much give you Singapore banners for each one ticket you do use, so that if you are lucky, you can get five stars on those banners as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for story and events in a nutshell. You guys may see this cube here, like at the bottom. Uh, this is kind of like an extra event kind of place, but uh, don't worry about that because it'll be a while before that actually becomes open in the game, and by then it's pretty straightforward what you need to do, and you'll have a grasp of everything in the game. So there's no really need for me to kind of go through all that. But yeah, so just want to recap and summarize again. Story mode, do your own leisure. If you want to do it as quick as possible, that's cool. If you don't, that's also cool as well. Try and get the characters unlocked as well. There's some characters who are only unlocked at the end of the chapter as well. So that's one thing you need to take note of. Um, but other than that, at your own leisure. Hard mode, whenever you guys want. Or just, my advice is to is to save it until there's a banner or a character that you really want to get a relic for. And that's about it for me, really. That's kind of my advice on it. Events, try and do it as quick as you can. Events are really short, so you can complete, you can complete them within the first couple of hours that they come active. So, that's going to be pretty cool. That's the other thing about this game, is that the events are quite easy to complete. And, oh wait, I just remembered. Global, we have you multiplayer from the get-go, so let's talk a bit about multiplayer. Multiplayer, for my experience, can be quite a tough environment. There are people who want to get as high school as possible, so they'll kick you out if they see any kind of weakness. So, it's a, it's a sad shame, unfortunately, because I think 
it ruins the chance because you can have some really good pies and the host will be like, oh, I'm going to kick you guys out because screw you guys, I'm just a jerk. And there's no reason as to why, but it's sad. But if you can, just be patient, keep trying. Eventually, you'll get your chance to go multiplayer. It's not. It's going to be quite daunting at first, but once you get into the swing of things, you'll be just fine with it. It's, it, it's, it does suck, I'm not going to lie. It is quite depressing when you do get kicked out, but this is one of the things. Keep your head up high. The rewards are worth the patience. So if you can, just keep, keep, keep going, keep, keep going. If not, um, guys, uh, when Global does come out, um, comment on any video and add me. And if you're the host and I'm playing, I'll join your parties. I'll, I'll make that promise to you guys as well. I'll join your parties if you need be, and <laughs> uh, hopefully get, get your numbers if you want to host and stuff. And if I want to host out, I'll do invites as well and you guys let, let you guys know. But that's pretty much it for events and in a nutshell. You get, you get a character and you get exclusive armor. Exclusive armor is really good. That's why you want to complete events as quick as possible because exclusive armor gives a lot of CP. And CP, you guys get you get lots of you get lots of passive, and the further you're in Crystal Awakening, the more expensive the passives get, but the better they are. So you kind of really want to have like um, the exclusive armor. So if if you even if you have like even if you have like a time limit, you got like a short space of time before the event finishes, and you're thinking, do I really want this? You the answer is always yes. So if if need be, use some gems to just get continue just to get the armor. I mean, I know I don't really like exercise like using gems for revival at any other point in the game, but if you're starting out, that event armor is really good because event characters at the beginning are way better than story characters just because of that exclusive armor. And so, make that push for it if you can. Make that push for it, guys. That's my recommendation. Anyway, uh, that'll be it for the story and events. And I'll talk a bit about battles and how to be a little bit better at battle mechanics. Anyway, see you in a bit. Bye bye. Okay, so let's talk about battling because battling is the crux of this game and it's how we'll be clearing content. Battle battles are quite fun actually. I really enjoy the battle system in this game. It's turn based and it does let you be a little strategic of how you play. It's, this battle gives you the opportunity to see everything. So you guys, you can see who's going to be attacked. As you guys can see, here, poor clouds being attacked by everyone here, and that means you can plan accordingly. Uh, I don't know whether or not um, Global will, will teach you this, but if you hold down on an enemy, you do get to see the profile of all the elements they're weak to or they're resistant to. I don't know if Global will have this from the get-go. We didn't have this from the get-go in JP. It got patched later on, but you get also get an advanced tab which shows you all kind of extra information like. Weapons they may be weak to, weapons they might be resistant to, any other nodes, and then how they attack and stuff like that. And that is really handy because that means you can understand what exactly the enemy does and there's certain strategy to it. So as you guys can see with the floating eye here, he is very resistant to physical attacks or using weapons. So you can use ranged and magic and you'll be fine against him, but don't use close combat ones because they don't do much to him. They, they resist them. And you guys can see here, they use an, a, a fun elemental attack as well. So that's that's all. That's a really good thing to know. And also, you can see um, any buffs they may have as well. So let's see. So guys can see here, it shows you the buffs and it also shows you passives which are active and also some passives were active as well. So that's really, that, this is really good information to know and take your time when you're battling, right? Take your time, assess the situation, again, you have all the time in the world to make your move. There's no time limits, there's no rush, just realize that, you know, what's the best move, think about the consequences of your move. If I attack, who's going to attack me after that and should I make that H3 attack or should I go with a brave attack? Also, you can see your delay on your actions as well. So if you hold down on the button of your attacks, you can see here, with the yellow arrow pointing above the squall, that's what happens if I use my attack. If I do my brave attack, then squall will be here. If, same with the H3 attack. If you want my brave attack, then here. But use, if I use my, H, my second H3 attack skill here, and I now will move further, but the delay is a lot less than all my other attacks, so that means I'll move ahead of hope after I use it. 
Also, guys, you can see how much HP damage your current Brave will do to an enemy. If you see his HP bar, you can see that there's like a gap. And that means that's how much HP they have left if you HP attack them. So that's a good thing to know. And if you play, if it's well, if it shines purple, that means you've got the kill shot. So if you use your HP attack on them, you will defeat them. So that's one thing to know as well. And one thing I can't exactly force it in this video, but there's a mechanic called chase. Chase happens randomly, but it the chance of it happening is increased if you keep attacking the same enemy over and over and over again. When your enemy is in chase mode, that means that you see them flying up. And if you have allies who can move before the enemy, they will attack the enemy as well. One of the good things about it is that you can do lots of brave damage, or you can do lots of HP damage. And if you HP damage during a chase, they take 10% extra HP damage at the end of the chase. So that's really, it's a really good thing to know if you want to go in for the kill, or they got lots of brave and you want to go in for HP attack. Just for this demonstration, I'm going to force a chase here, because that's what Cloud can do. Also, it's important to note when you're chasing, you do have five seconds to make your move. If you don't make your move in time limit, it'll default to a brave attack. As you guys can see here, I did 5,000 damage, so that's that's all really good. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for battles, really. Um, well, this, the more you get used to the battles, the faster you can get this game, but when you guys are starting out, just be calm. You know, there's, there's no rush. There's absolutely no rush at all. <laughs> You're making your moves. Just do what you feel is best and just make sure, just play it safe. Like, if you only go, you only want to be risky if you know that you can kill the enemy the next turn. Don't like, go in and get broken because your guys can get broken as well. And if you do get broken, the enemies do tend to get a lot more of the break bonus than you do. And it can be quite dangerous because when you do get broken, or when an enemy gets broken, I can see the turn gets pushed back by one. So that is that is good to know. And that's pretty much it for battles. One thing I do want to show as well. Summons. Summons are really good as well because what happens when you summon is they do an attack on an enemy and then everyone get extra turns. Now these extra turns are a good time to do lots of HP attacks as well, do lots of damage because before the enemy can move, you can hit them so many times. So let's look at the timeline, look at that. That enemy doesn't have a chance. He's gonna get beat before anyone he can do anything to any one of us. We can use the opportunity to attack back and there's nothing he can do. And that's pretty much it for battle mechanics really. Um just yeah, I wanna keep re reiterating, play it smart, because the smarter you play, like the better you get at this game, and you need to play smart in multiplayer as well. If you play if you don't play reckless if you play recklessly in the multiplayer, you'll get a lower score and score is the most important thing about multiplayer. So you've got to pick your moments when to be reckless and when to be smart. And you'll realise it the more experience you get at battling. Understand the enemies, understand what they're gonna do, and that'll only help you. But yeah, that's pretty much it for battle mechanics. Alright guys. I'll see you for the next tutorial. This is probably going to be either the best screen or the worst screen. The Relic Draw screen is <laughs> a place of mixed emotions. And this one is a bit of a heart to heart to you guys because Gacha is either the best or the worst feeling ever. And <laughs> that kind of discouragement can people think, ah, oh, I don't want to play anymore. But that kind of highs make you think, oh yes, I want to play. If you guys watch my video for a long time, you know that when I get good stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, this is great, I love it, uh, this is Let's Play, I'll see you for the next video. But when I do badly, I'm like, oh, this is Let's Play, uh, thank you guys all for watching, bye bye. And those kind of emotions, the highs and lows are kind of like what make gacha games. And um, my advice to you is don't let the gacha beat you down. Like, even if your pulls suck now, you'll have a banner where your pulls will be amazing. And um, that's the kind of what I've experienced here. I do get a lot of 1 of 11 draws, but I have got some absolutely amazing 2, maybe 3 out of 11 draws as well. So, never, never be defeated by the gacha. Like, it's there to test your will as a player, and just get through it. If, you, if your draw sucks, that's not what you want. Just, like, maybe close the app for a bit, take some time out, just 
calm yourself, distract yourself with something else, and then come back to the game. Don't get too angry. Don't let that anger, that kind of frustration get to you. Because remember, at the end of the day, this is a game. It, it can bring up the emotions else, but it's, it's a game at the end of the day. So just be like, whew, deep breaths. <sighs> Maybe count to 10, like that kind of stuff, really. And don't be too pressured. Like, there, there are risks that you think, oh, it's never going to come back, but they do come back. I, <laughs> if you guys can see him on this button here, this has exclusives for Zidane, Squall, and Rem. Now, this is reoccurrence. Zidane's exclusive has come up like three times before this. Squall's like three times before this. Rem was in the, like, the event before. So, <laughs> if you miss out now, there will be another chance to get it again. So, just be cool. Be cool with that. You know? <laughs> Don't feel too pressured to get that rig there and then. I mean, it, it'll be good, but don't feel that kind of pressure. You don't need that kind of pressure on you. It will come back again. I assure you guys of that. I, I assure you of that. <laughs> Squirrels of Dawn have come back so many times. Like, it's, just, it's, just, it's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we, you guys, you global players, will be getting guarantee five from day one like that is fantastic that is so good for you guys because the first banner contains two good relics that will carry for most of the, the early part of the game so like, like that is fantastic I'm, I'm glad for you guys i hope you guys all enjoy that because guarantee from guarantee five was great it mean it meant no more zero 11 draws but funnily enough, like, I got a 3 out of 11 in one pull once before Guarantee 5, so that's quite hilarious. But, like, since Guarantee 5, I do get a lot of 1 of 11 draws, which, it's not ideal, but it's something at the end of the day. Where I get most of my ticket, more of my, my regs are from, is the tickets. Now, I'm speaking anecdotically here, my ticket luck is quite okay. Like, I do tend to get 5 stars every now and then with tickets, but... One of the things I think I'm weak with, and I normally give you guys advice, is that I like get off. I don't get a five star. I'm like, I gotta keep going, keep going until I get a five star and waste my tickets. And one of the good things is you really should just save your tickets. Really, until there's like a banner that's like top tier that you see everyone then yeah, we want to get this one. Like, I don't recommend wasting your tickets. Like, I'm gonna waste one here because I want to get something on this banner and let's see what happens if we get something. Oh, nice silver. So actually, this actually quite ties in quite well. So when you use when you use a ticket, if it's blue, that means you got a chance of getting a three, a four, and a five star. But it starts at three star. If it's silver, that means you get you you start at four stars. So you're gonna get a four star or a five star. And in the very rare occasions, I've seen it happen to me like maybe like five times. It starts off at gold, and when it starts off at gold, that means you are guaranteed to get a five star. Now I'm gonna get my I'm probably gonna get a four star here. So let's see. Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Okay, 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 that's crazy. Do not take this as. Oh my god. <laughs> I just want to do one pull just to see how it is, and that is fantastic. I did not expect this at all. Uh, <laughs> and this is the kind of thing I was talking about, about highs and lows in this game, because I. If you guys don't know, I just, did, I just did a pull on these banners not too long ago. And I didn't get what I really, really wanted. But this is amazing. Like, this is the kind of thing that makes you just go, wow. And we don't expect it. That's when RNG can be quite good to you. So that's good. So that's good. Uh, eventually, what will happen in this game is that you will get these things called weekly banners. And most of the time, they are half price. And those half price pulls are kind of worth it, in my opinion. Because it's half price and you're trying to get good stuff. And it's normally, like, good relics on those weekly banners. It normally is, so that's stuff I recommend going for. And wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> it's completely unexpected. Um, you can get the option to buy extra gems here. I uh, don't know if Global will have this, but there's often sales in this game so that you can get a discounted amount of gems, which I think is fantastic. I wish Record Keeper had this. I really do. But gems are a half, um, sales are really good because you get quite a lot for like, a lot less than you should, like, <laughs> monetary wise. Unfortunately, JP has kind of locked players out of being able to buy um, unless you press you on a Japanese device in Japan. So that's a shame. I I, can, I can't pay to play anymore. But you know, if it is in global, like jump on gem um, gem sales because you do get a lot. 
you do get a lot, and that's good. And the prices are quite good. The prices are quite good for this game, so... And to get a sale on top of that is fantastic. Also, you can use screen to buy these books. The blue books gives you, like, um, times to experience for, like, 30 minutes. The green book gives you times to money uh, for 30 minutes. And the red book is uh, times to on any kind of drops you get from battles. And then the star... Uh, is the combination of all three for half an hour so that's all good as well so like what I did when I first started was I used the um, red books I kept buying red books to do the crystal quests and I was getting lots of crystals which made I could um, crystal awaken my characters a lot quicker and when characters are crystal awakened like at higher levels they get lots of good stats and make them quite good so that's one of the things like I did personally uh, if you're feeling like you want to like get your characters to be leveled as quick as possible use these books they help out a lot they do help out a lot but that's pretty much it for the Redix Gacha and stuff like that. Oh, well the, I would say that in this game, like, it is very generous with gems. Like, I think that gems are quite easy to come by compared to a lot of Gacha games I do play. Uh, I think, like, you, you do get quite a lot thrown at you anyway. Just always remember to log in. Always remember to log in because you get, like, 400 gems a week if you log in there every 10 days. So, I oh, know, yeah, every, every 10 days it's 400 gems. So, that, that's going to be pretty good as well. So that's something I recommend as well because that's... Uh, even if you don't like play, like just those that login bonus is good. You also get 100 gems every time you complete 5 stages per day. So you kind of, even if you're like, oh, I don't want to play this game. Go in, just do like the first stage of story mode. Just keep doing it 5 times, get your gems and then go out. And before you know it, you'll have a lot more than you think. And you're like, wow, that's pretty good. So... In my honest opinion, you did get quite a lot of gems, like, even though you've been locked out of buying gems. As you guys can see my channel, I do do, like, a pull, one pull on like, almost every banner. So, <laughs> that is also a testament to just how much gems you do get in this game. So, in that sense, I just want like about Premier, is that it's quite generous with gems. So, don't, don't worry if you don't get what you want and you have, like, a small amount. There's still room to get a lot more. But that's just an anecdote, that's my opinion, that's how I feel. I mean, compared to how many gacha games I have played, because I play a lot of gacha games, more than what I'm calling this channel, and <laughs> a lot of them aren't as generous as I find or prompt me to be. But that's pretty much it. So that's my thoughts on um, Reddit Dwarves and Gacha. But yeah, this is the mess plan. Uh, we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial. Alright, bye bye. So this is just like a little quick tutorial here, or a little bit of hip, a little tip here. So one of the things about upgrading weapons is that it can get quite expensive and quite resource demanding to do it. Because upgrading weapons, unfortunately, <laughs> is, um, I don't know if it was sort off like how, how it is now in JP, but back in the day, it was so expensive to do it that you run out of money really quickly. So one thing of that, I used to do back in the day was if you got a lot of two star weapons max out those two star weapons and then use those weapons and fuse those two star weapons that are maxed out into your weapons because it gives a lot more experience and it's a lot more cheaper but by doing this you save money overall because you're not spending so much money on using the orbs the orbs can be quite expensive to use so if you can get get two star weapons because they drop quite e a lot in story mode get a whole bunch of them fuse them into each other get max um, max star uh, two star weapons and then fuse them into your main weapons and that can save you lots of money and also increase speed which your weapons level up that's a little tip that I was taught and I'll pass on to you guys as well because they helped me out so much but if we get um, where we are if we're able to start this off where everything is a lot cheaper then that's fine you can just use all my orbs but if you run out of orbs then use the weapon trick as well then use the weapon trick because that can help you like increase the experience of your weapons as well so that's one good tip that I thought I could have that, that I felt that helped me out as well like, like before I used to use up all my orbs and be like oh there's nothing I can do and then sit and wait till I got more but what <laughs> I was then taught to do was use weapons and that helped me out, max out a lot of stuff. And that's why I was able to click content. Because I was able to max out all my weapons when I got them. And that's quite good as well. But yeah, that's just a little tip that I want to pass on to you guys. Okay, characters. So let's talk about which characters are really good to invest in early on. So this is all like my experience. I might, it might not be the same for many other players but from how I've been playing this game and what I've come to 
enjoy um you can use pretty much any character you want there's no real pressure and although there are some characters that are a lot better for situation than others you can complete pretty much both content with any character you want as long as you have them leveled up and you've got like relics for them as well and therefore there's always room to use your favorite characters if you want but characters that can help you get through a lot of content in this game early on like I find that Warrior of Light is quite good because Warrior of Light's first ability is called Shine Shield that Shine Shield gives like a shield to a character which means that they don't take any brave damage for as long as that shield stays active and that shield is based on a number so if it goes down to zero then, it, then it, that shield disappears but what happens is when you take no damage from the Shine Shield enemies don't gain brave from their attacks either so that is really good. That is really good at the next thing because defensively, you, you can do that shine shield with anyone you want and they're protected. So they, you can be more active. You can go for the HP attack because if they attack you back, probably, they aren't going to be doing damage to you. They can't break you from zero. So that's one thing to do. And that's why I like Warrior of Light Shine Shield. And that's why I, why I maxed him out. His second ability is Throw Shield or Throw Buckler. That, what happens is you use that attack. It's a ranged attack. So if there are enemies who are weak to range or there's enemies who resistant to physical then you can use a range attack as well and what that does is it fixates and draws fire to a ray of light so that means that only the enemy will target a ray of light that gives your two other characters freedom to do whatever they want because they won't be targeted by um, their enemy unless they use an all attack if they use an all attack then your allies will get hit as well just want to make that abundantly clear but for me Warrior of Light is like my favourite attack unit to use in this game and that's why I went all out to make sure I had it maxed out I uh, next up is Cloud Cloud I think is fantastic for the early game like he does so much for people and if you really should shoot for his relic when you, when you do pull for a Cloud because Cloud is good Cloud's first ability Cross Lash it it's a brave to HP attack, so it's two hits of brave and then one HP attack. So you can break the enemy and then HP attack and do tons of damage with the cloud. That's one good thing. But secondly, is that cross slash can also stun an enemy, which means that they can't do anything on their turn comes around. They won't be able to do anything, so they, their turn gets skipped. And that is really good. Cloud's kind of second ability is finishing touch, and what finishing touch does is it initiates a chase. It's got low uses, but if you use it just right, you can start chasing, and chasing is really good. Like I mentioned before, for dealing with HP damage, lots of breaks. And one thing to also note is that when you do chase as well, it means that your summon gauge shoots up even faster because it, your summon gauge goes up for each hit that your your allies do in the air, and they also the enemy also goes up when the enemy hits the wall. And that's why Kyle is one of the best enemy characters to use because he just he'll help you through a lot of content, a lot of content. Um, next up is Hope. Now, if Hope comes pre-buffed, because before, like, when Hope first in the game, his Protect and Shell were single target, but he got buffed where he went to the whole party, and they also got Brave as well, depending on his attack. Now, if we come, if we get um, post-buff Hope, then he he is really good because his he reduces damage physical and magical which means that you take a lot less damage that means you're a lot less likely to get broken a lot less likely to just get swarmed and just lose a lot of brave from the enemy's attacks also he also gives the party brave as well which is really good really really good because that means that when you keep constantly supplying brave to the party that means that they're doing a lot lot more damage and it, means, it also means that you can HP attack and if hope is next just give Pi to give brave to the pie, and then that means that person is like you to get broken. So that's why I really like Hope, and I think if we get post buff Hope, then Hope is a really good character as well because he just keeps you protected. Next up is Isola. Isola is another really good character um, from the beginning as well because her first ability Stone it delays the enemy's turn by one. So if they get hit by it, then their turn gets pushed back by one. And that delay also stacks with breaks. So if you break an enemy as well with stone, that means that their turn's getting pushed by, by two. And that is really good in that sense because that means that you can further push the enemy away. And especially if, if you stun them with cloud, then that enemy won't really be attacking that much. And that is why the early game is really, really good. Her second skill is Medic Hara, which 
it gives um, Brave to the party, depending on Michelle's Brave as well. So the higher the, her Brave is, the more Brave the parties get. It's really good to use this in summer mode because that means that you can just launch a HP attack on the HP attack. You don't have to worry about building up Brave and you sort of can just keep supplying Brave to the party. And that's why it is really good early on. Uh, that's, that's a, lot, a lot of strategies I used at the beginning was using summon mode, getting Scylla and then just keep using Medicara, which meant that everyone kept getting brave and I could HP attack for days and just end up beating enemies quite easily. Now, this one is a risky one and this is kind of an anecdotal one for me because what is good about Cecil is that he's like our main, he's our first source of AoE damage. So his first skill, Darkness, does AoE damage to all enemies, it's Dark Elemental. But with both of Cecil's skills, it makes him lose HP when he uses his atta those attacks. So if he's losing HP, that means if he does get HP attack, there is a good chance he could die. So you have to be very careful when playing with Cecil. But his second skill, uh, Valiant Blow, it is a chaser as well as Cloud and it has more uses. But like again, he'll lose HP when he uses it. But at, at the same time, you can get five chases as opposed to Cloud's three. So that's really good. That is why I recommend Cecil as well, but it's it's kind of like a one that quite white worry, worry about. He can be really good if you play it right, but it can be bad if you just be reckless with it because he'll die very quickly if you're not careful. Next up is Ida. She's a solid character. She has a brave the HP attack as her first attack, which deals four hit and then the HP attack. And then also gives her a attack and speed buff when she uses it. And that's quite good because still, Ida is quite a fast attacker anyway. So you can use it and you'll get lots of attacks in there with Ida. And it's quite easy to break enemies with her first skill. And <laughs> she ends up doing like tons and tons of damage. Her second skill, Touch of Death. It has a chance to poison enemies. Enemies that are poisoned do lose Brave as well. So that's quite good. And yeah, that's pretty much why Ida is a solid character. Now I'm going over to my favourites, Vaughn. I love Vaughn. Like, I do love Vaughn, because Vaughn is good. Vaughn uh, is all about doing lots and lots of HP attacks. Um, his first and second skills are too brave to HP attacks, and the gimmick, gimmick behind Vaughn is, after using a certain amount of times, then it gets an evolution where it does a second HP attack after the first, and it does even more damage, and with the high amounts of brave damage you're doing with them, you can break enemies quite easily and then do lots and lots of damage. His second skill... Um, it's the same as well, except that it's, it's first wind and then light, where his first, his first skill is not elemental, then ice. When you use your first skill for Vaughn, it gives him an attack up boost, and with his second one, it, it can give a chance to lower the enemy's defense, and also the um, extension is an automatic blind, and then if he is blind, then there's a large chance that they will miss their attack. So that's pretty good as well. So, he does, so Vaughn is a really, really good character in my opinion, and that's why I think he's one of the characters you should invest in early. Oh gosh, trying to move it with my we got fat fingers is hard. There we go. Okay. Now Yuna as well is another character. Yuna is a character that can clear out debuffs. So if your characters do get debuffed, then she can use a clear out with Asuna. And when she's Asuna, like everyone gets brave as well. So that's another good thing about um it, Yuna, and then the second skill is cheer, so it increases the person's tar targets, pers targets, targets brave by a little bit as well, which is quite good. Because that means you can do lots of lots of lots of damage with Yuna. <laughs> That's why I like her because she can just increase people's brave quite easily, and she's clearly like, clearing out debuffs. Uh, she's not she's not like, an overly amazing in my opinion, but she's quite good. But if you do max out um, Yuna's relics and passives, she becomes absolutely top tier. So that's one thing to note. She is really, really good. Oh, just trying to move this up. It's really, really pain. Penelo is another one. Like I like Penelo. Penelo has dances give party buffs. And really, the first one gives haste, so everyone's speed goes up a bit. So that means you can get a lot more turns in before the enemy does attack. And that's really good. A second one is like a HP regen, so everyone gets a little bit of HP regen. And that's cool as well, because that means you can be a bit more reckless. Especially with the enemies who do, once they get their brave back to the thought after being broken, they'll just HP attack straight away. So what she does here is help you heal that off that damage. Now, if we get if we get um, post buff terror, 
Terra is really good because she DPSs so, so, so well. So her first skill, uh, it will do, like, it will multiply your, your bravery a bit before attacking. And if it hits an enemy, hits them with a defense down debuff as well. And it also gives Terra some buffs as well. Her second skill, Meteor, does 10 hits. And it does also have a chance of learning its speed as well. Uh, Terra does a high amount of damage as well. Her and Vaughn are like two of the best characters to do lots of damage with, so that's one to note. Like, they are so good at doing that. And they, these are why these are characters that you should kind of be pushing for if you want to like clear out content because they just, they just do so much in such a small space of time. But if we get post buff Terra, because before, uh, before Terra was buffed, what happens if you use one of her skills, then she would get. The next time she uses the HP attack, then she would use like her, me her meltdown or meteor. But what happens now is that if you use it, she uses it straight away, and that's really good. So you can do so much damage in this of time. So if we do get um, post buff terror, then she's one character you need to invest in. Oh, I'm just trying to move this curse is so hard. <gasps> oh god, first all problems, man. Aiko is another one. Aiko is quite good. She comes as an event character, so she also automatically comes in with like a really, really good like armor as well. But Aiko's second skill is what makes her so good. It does a lot, a lot of damage. And what happens is everyone gets brave equal to the damage that she does deal. And if you break an enemy, that's even more brave as well. So she's really good at giving party brave, and uh, she's one of the one of the really good characters. Like that holy, uh, it's a holy elemental skill as well. So enemies who are weak to holy will be taking more damage, and that means that like, more brave to the party. So in terms of giving brave to the party, Iko is really good at doing that. One of my favorite characters for it. Okay, I think that's it for me. That I think that for that that. Yeah, because I could do this all day, but I think I'm stop here. And I, those characters are characters that I recommend will get you through most of the early game. Which so if you can invest in them, invest in them as much as you can. But yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I swear I forgot one person. Let like, me just go back. Squall, because he's docked out. Squall is one character who I think you should invest in as well. Because Squall, Squall is really good at doing lots of brave damage. Like Squall does tons and tons of brave damage. Uh, the, his gimmick is that if his brave is below a certain amount, then the hits on his abilities increase. And he does so much brave damage that he is fantastic. At him. He he trips away brave quite well, and he gets he can do you can do lots of damage with Squall. Like he is one, one character who can stand alone and just be way above like a lot of the characters. So if you can, like, because he's our first event character. It'll try going, try um, re-rolling for school stuff if you can, because school stuff is really good. It is really good. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. He also comes in with event armor, and his event armor gives him lots of CP as well. His first ability is well, I think it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's four hits and then five if you are under a certain amount. And then his second ability is six, and it's a HP attack as well at the end of it. So he does a lot. He does lots and lots of damage. I'm so sorry I forgot to put school in. Like, I can't believe I didn't put him in. But yeah, <laughs> school is one, one, another really good character to aim for as well. But yeah, but that really is it. That really is. It. I could, I could do this for hours upon hours. But no, these are the characters who I feel will get you through the early game. They're all really good characters. Characters I really, really, really glad I invested in, and they've come out so clutch for me. And also, these characters will be a lot stronger as the game progresses anyway. So, these are the characters that you really want to invest in. I mean, guys, get your favourites as well. So, if you want to do your favourites, that's fine. But for me, like, these are the characters which I think you should invest in. But yeah, uh, that's it. <sighs> I guess that's about it, really, for my little guy of Opera Omnia. I hope you guys will enjoy it. So, I'm going to give you just a few little more tips before we end off this guide. So in here in the, in the homepage, you're the option screen. Now if you guys can see here this top option, this is like the kind of mode where you're going to go to full speed or like normal mode. Um, in this mode here, it's a lot more battery cons consuming, but battles do flow a lot faster, but it, like I said, it kills your battery. So if you don't want to go through that, then just pick this mode here. It will slow down the things so that battle goes a bit slower, and also you can serve battery a lot more as well. One thing you can do as well, if, I don't know what it will be in um, English, but if you go down to this option here, which is like second to the bottom, that lets you install data to the game, and it does improve the performance, loading times, 
are a lot less bad than they are if they don't have it. Because if you don't have this done, like it can be quite slow at the beginning as it tries to catch everything. But by doing this, it catches everything and makes the gameplay a lot more smooth. Like you, you will notice a big difference if you do this. Um, especially do this after every kind of maintenance because like it kind of just adds in a whole bunch of stuff to coming into the game. So it's always good to do that just to make sure. Um, yeah, but that's kind of it really for Opry Omnia. If there's anything else that you guys don't know, or you have any more questions, comment below and I'll answer them the best I can. Um, uh, it's going guys to play this game. I hope you guys all enjoy it if you are playing it. I love this game personally. It's my favorite mobile game out there and I hope you guys will have a good time with it too. But yeah, that's pretty much it really. I mean, I've got nothing more that I can think of about what else is there to talk about in this game. I think I've gone through pretty much most of the stuff. I will be releasing another video uh, later on before the game comes out with a little preview of the first event. So uh, watch out for that. It'll, I'll probably try to be as detailed as I can. I might miss a few things, but overall, it should give a good gist of what you should expect from the first event. Anyway, guys, this is Best Play. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, like I said, comment below if you have any more questions. Any kind of questions, send them my way. I do try to answer comments uh, come on my channel. I mean, I can be quite slow because my job is quite demanding. But if I do, I, I will try to answer your question to the best that I can do. And yeah, <coughs> sorry, my voice is actually kind of going because of how long I've been talking. But. <coughs> Yeah, like I said, it can't ask me anything, guys. And if there's you want more clarification on anything I've put on this video, please ask away. Don't be afraid to ask me anything. If it's if you think it's stupid, ask it anyway. Like I, I'm quite patient. I don't delete comments or get angry at them. So please, ask away if you have any more questions. This is this is a really good game if you give it the time and love, but you wouldn't start if you don't play. So yeah, I hope you guys. I hope this helps you through your time. Anyway, this is Mess Play once again. Subscribe to me if you haven't subscribed to me. I do a lot of Opera Omnia content. I do play Red Keeper as well, but Opera Omnia is like the main game I play on the channel now. It's my, it's my love. It's my one true love. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm here. If you guys need me, I'm here to give as much advice as I can to help you through this. And let's all have a good time. Let's all have a very good time. Let's first remember the community of Opera Omnia. Anyway, bye-bye.